Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome and thank you so much for joining me for my top fragrance picks for holiday 2022. I definitely recommend that you go back and check out my holiday picks of 2021 if you haven't already. There is going to be a little bit of overlap, but there definitely are some new scents this season. I still recommend all of my 2021 picks as well, so definitely recommend checking that out. We have our warm and spices in this video. We have our gourmands and our florals. So there's a little bit of everything for everyone in this video. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first one on my list here is Commodities Milk Personal. Commodity does this really cool thing where they come up with three different versions of the same fragrance. So they'll do, let's say, Milk Personal, Milk Expressive, and then Milk Bold. And what's neat about this is that it's not just different layers of intensity or parfum uh, within the fragrance, it's actually different notes. So it's actually really interesting because you could potentially love Milk Personal, but not love Milk Bold or Milk Expressive because they actually have different notes that play with the main ingredients of the fragrance. So I am in my travel spray era. You're gonna see a lot of travel sprays in this video. And I gotta tell you, you know, I love a big bottle of perfume sitting on my dresser as much as the next person, but as we head into a recession, I gotta save my money. And also I feel like it's somewhat wasteful that I am not using these big bottles of juice. I just can't get through them all because I have too many fragrances. Let's not look down on the humble travel spray. It is the same juice after all, and they're perfect for travel and, you know, applying when you're out and about. So anyway, let's get into Milk Personal. So Milk Personal has top notes of skin musk and cashmere woods. The mid is amber and marshmallow and base notes of mahogany wood and white cedar. This is like a woody snowflake. So at first in this fragrance, you get all musk and cashmere woods. This is a woody fragrance to me. I'm not really getting a lot of the sweetness, but as it begins to dry down, you do get more of the powderiness and the vanilla qualities of that marshmallow note. It's very comforting, it's soothing, relaxing, not overly sweet though. I saw that someone said that this smelled like a white rabbit candy, and I have to somewhat agree, it's not fully there, it's not totally edible like a white rabbit candy or gourmand fragrance would be, because it definitely has that, it's powered by the, these woodsy notes. Very soft, very comforting, perfect easy reach for those chilled out days or you know sitting around the house just watching movies and that sort of thing and um after i'd say the first hour or so it does sit quite close to the skin so it's you know very delightful pleasant fragrance so yeah if you want to smell like a woody snowflake i recommend commodities milk personal next up here we have another commodity fragrance two commodity fragrance have made my list here and honestly if i had it i think that their velvet fragrance would also make this list but we'll talk about that later <laughs> this is a commodity gold expressive so this is the original version of the commodity gold fragrance oh my gosh this is like your quintessential party fragrance it's alluring and it's commanding it's warm and woodsy yet sweet i love this one for the holidays something that i will mention here and i haven't personally smelled it but the gold bold version uh actually has nutmeg and saffron in it which i think would be so amazing for the holidays so if that is in your collection i think it would be a perfect holiday fragrance as well oh my gosh this is just so decadent let me go ahead and take you through the notes here so we have top notes of juniper berries and creamy musk mid notes of vanilla and amber and base notes of sandalwood and benzoin this is oh my gosh i mean you really do get those notes it's that molten amber it's the creamy sandalwood it's the sweet vanilla it's just lovely but the top notes of being juniper berries and musk i think this already makes such an ideal festive fragrance because Juniper berries for me evoke memories of Christmas. People use juniper berries to decorate their house during the holidays. You know, imagine uh, table decor and in your tree, etc. And juniper berries is actually what makes gin smell the way it does. And a lot of people say that gin smells like Christmas trees. So you're getting that kind of festive juniper berry in here with that beautiful musk. The musk ties in here also really nicely. It's it's smooth and expensive smelling, yet comforting. It actually reminds me a lot of Gentle Fluidity Gold, especially with that amber and vanilla, which is funny because 
gentle fluidity gold and gold have very similar names but they also have very similar fragrance notes they both have juniper berries they both have i believe amber they both have vanilla and musk i know that gentle fluidity gold gets a lot of hype but i have to say that commodities gold expressive deserves all of that hype because it is every bit as beautiful and sweet and again decadent and delicious as gentle fluidity after about 45 minutes of wearing this one you begin to get the sweetness of the vanilla and the golden amber combined with that musk i think that this is going to be heavy in my rotation this holiday season and also throughout the winter months it is just a perfect party date fragrance great for you know christmas day new year's eve date nights etc this is again i'm going to compare it to how i talked to gentle fluidity gold this is your pearls and cashmere and champagne bubbles type of fragrance this also has really great projection and staying power after a few hours it does sit a bit closer to the skin but i have to say this lasted over 12 hours on my skin and it was every bit as beautiful from the first ray until the last sniff when I was going to bed. Next on my list here is Killian's I Don't Need a Prince by My Side to Be a Princess. Such a mouthful. I really don't love the packaging on these. Um, this came from the collection that they did with Sephora where it was more like mid-range price points. They all had funny little names like this. I really slept on this fragrance when it first came out. I think it was honestly the packaging just really turned me off. I was not interested. But yeah, I was I was a fool. My sister loved this fragrance. I think that she had maybe like five bottles of backup because this was rumored to have been discontinued with the rest of the collaboration. However, they did bring out Princess again. It's part of the permanent collection through Killian now. And when this came back in stock, I picked up a travel size bottle and it's been amazing. This just smells so good. It's feminine and warm and a comforting gourmand, which is what you want during the holidays. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the notes from Fragrantica, but it says the top note is lemon, middle notes of green tea, ginger, peach, Hedion, jasmine, and apple, and base notes of marshmallow, vanilla, and benzoin. So the opening here is bright. You get that green tea. It is slightly bitter. It's fresh. I'm not sure if I get the lemon per se. I think it might be more so getting maybe ginger, even a little bit of more of like an apple note in the beginning. Um, I don't think I get the full-on lemon here, but it's beautiful. As it begins to dry down about 30 minutes in, you're getting that mixture of the green tea and ginger and mixing it with this like fruity floral notes. It's slightly powdery and it really makes it smell more of like a matcha powder and it's slightly sweet. But I think that the best part is when it fully begins to bake on your skin and dry down and it's the most comforting creamy marshmallow and green tea fragrance so picture like a frothy hot matcha latte with marshmallows on top that is what this is like it's just that creamy kind of toasted marshmallow not toasted and like fiery but more like it's slightly crisp because it's been hot sitting in your drink. I also get somewhat of like a graham cracker note in it, which is interesting. I'm not really sure where I'm getting the graham cracker note from in this, but I definitely get like a really warm, slightly spicy, crispy kind of quality in this fragrance that reminds me of a graham cracker. So even though this is very gourmand, uh, very vanilla, I think that green tea helps to keep it feeling more mature. And the deep dry down on this is just yummy, creamy, sugared vanilla. It's like the inside of that marshmallow. It's just beautiful, it's delicious, it's a cozy scent perfect for the holiday season. Also, apologies for the light here. It is later in the afternoon. I'm starting to lose my light. Uh, we actually have an approaching snowstorm. Uh, hopefully, I don't lose power altogether, but yes, thank you for bearing with me through these this weird lighting here. Anyway, next up on the list here is Victor and Rolf's Flower Balm. This is actually the Ruby Orchid Flanker. I feel like I can't smell Flower Balm. Oh my gosh, it's so lovely. Without thinking of Christmas and Christmas presents, probably because I used to work at a department store when I was young when Flower Bomb first came out and I remember everyone was buying this for their wives and girlfriends for Christmas so it just reminds me of that time of year. So the notes on Ruby Orchid are top notes of peach and vine, middle notes of orchid, and base notes of vanilla bean. Oh my gosh, 
it's just lovely you know it's not the most mature fragrance maybe but she is just this champagne bubble of a girl she is effervescent she's fruity she's lovely I just love this juice. When you first spray Ruby Orchid, you really just get the DNA of Flower Balm with a little bit of peach mixed in, but as it begins to settle on your skin, you begin to be able to pick out the, the notes that set it apart from Flower Balm and actually make it quite different. The top note is this powdery peach with a dose of leafy green freshness. The peach is it's sparkling yet a fleshy peach. It's not that gummy candy synthetic type of peach that you experience with let's say Tom Ford's bitter peach. This is, yeah, it's a lot more sparkling, it's fleshy, it's it's juicier. The top is, is delicate, it's fruity and slightly floral, and then as it begins to dry down, that's where you get that flower bomb DNA that we all have come to love. You're getting that patchouli, you're getting more vanilla than the original. It's it's syrupy, it's thick, and it's a heady floral. This for me is perfect for like a holiday date night or cocktail party. You're all dressed up, you know, your hair is done, your makeup's done, your heels on, your cocktail. Um, it's like the good girl version of black opium because she's more feminine, she's sweet, the juice is pink. I mean, this is just beautiful lovely fragrance so next up here we have one of my all-time holiday and cold weather fragrances this is tom ford's tobacco vini i'm actually wearing it today and just basking in it every time i move around my arms i smell it and it is just gorgeous so for the top notes on this one we have top notes of tobacco leaf and spicy notes middle notes of vanilla cacao tonka bean and tobacco blossom and base notes of dried fruits and woody notes when you first spray this fragrance it is like spicy root beer on your skin. It has amazing projection. It is warm and spicy. As this begins to settle down more, you get the powderiness from the tonka bean, and then you get this beautiful vanilla quality. Uh, you get some more sweetness from the cacao as well. So the base is my all-time favorite on this fragrance because you're kind of getting a blend of everything. You're getting that tobacco note that you got at the very beginning, that kind of root beer note mixed with the cacao mixed with the vanilla and then you're also getting this dried fruit note and if you've been to my channel before you've heard me talk about this this is what reminds me of christmas because when i think of christmas i used to go with my polish friend to a polish uh, grocery store and we would get these chocolate covered plums and I don't know what it is about plums, but they just remind me of Christmas. Maybe it's like the sugar plum fairy, but this reminds me of like chocolate covered raisins and plums and fruit cake and that sort of thing. I would wear this one to family gatherings, parties, shopping, whatever the occasion, I'm wearing this. It is just a perfect easy reach. It's like a mix between chocolate covered plums mixed with like a root beer vanilla ice cream. It's wonderful. Next up here we have Killian's Love Don't Be Shy, which I think is the perfect sugar plum fairy nutcracker ballet type of fragrance. This starts off with a beautiful orange blossom note and it's sweet and light floral and then it dries down into a caramel marshmallow vanilla. We have top notes here of neroli, bergamot, pink pepper, and coriander. Middle notes of orange blossom, jasmine, honeysuckle, rose, and iris. And then base notes of sugar, vanilla, caramel, musk, civet, and labdanum. So again, the top note on this is that white floral neroli that we all love. So as it begins to dry down, you get my favorite part of the fragrance. You're getting the sugar and the vanilla and the caramel in this. It reminds me a lot of bubble tape. If you're familiar with that pink marshmallowy type of bubble gum, it's like the powder on top of that, that soft kind of foamy gum, um, as opposed to like a double bubble type of gum. I just love this fragrance. I know it's becoming quite popular out there, but for good reason. It's wonderful. It's your girly girl type of fragrance. And this is something that I actually reach for all year round and just love. Next up here, we have Killian's Angel Share. This one is a perfect unisex fragrance for both women and men. It is boozy and spicy and sweet. I love this as a date fragrance. I love it for a New Year's Eve fragrance or maybe a Christmas Eve type of fragrance because it's fun, it's boozy, it's when you've got your eggnog and your rum, your horchata, whatever you're doing. It's just, it's lovely. The top notes on this one is uh, cognac, middle notes of cinnamon, tonka bean, and oak, and base notes of praline, vanilla, and sandalwood. 
very alcohol forward, very boozy and in your face. I feel like um, it's it's rich, it's creamy. You definitely get the, the cognac in this with that boozy note. You get the cinnamon and you get the oak as well. There's definitely this underlying woodiness to the fragrance and it's warm and spicy. Um, I would also say that this smells a lot like a boozy cinnamon bun or imagine like some sort of like an apple pie or apple crumble that maybe you've muddled the apples in some sort of rum or cognac. It's very delicious. It's rich smelling. I love this sort of fragrance to spray on my coat and my a scarf and that sort of thing. It's perfect for cold weather. If you're visiting any Christmas markets, this is going to really warm your soul. Next on my list here is Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. I know I talk about this one all the time, but I can't help it. I just love it. It smells like one of my favorite desserts, which is a bake ball tart. If you're not familiar, definitely go out to a British bakery near you and try one because this is essentially what a bake ball tart smells like. This one has top notes of black cherry, cherry liqueur, bitter almonds, and the heart notes are griot syrup. It's like a macerated sour cherry type of syrup, uh, Turkish rose, and jasmine sambac, and base notes of uh, Peru balsam, roasted tonka beans, vetiver, sandalwood, and cedar. So when you first spray this, this is all fleshy, macerated black cherry. It is juicy and yummy. Uh, this is the type of cherry that you would put into a cocktail. You know those expensive cocktail cherries? That is this type of cherry. It is not like a candy type of cherry note. And as it dries down, you get more of that almond note, uh, which is why I mentioned it smells a lot like a Bakewell tart to me. And as it dries down, you lose the cherry completely, but you get these really beautiful grounding notes of the cedar and the vetiver and the sandalwood, etc. This is definitely a grown-up fragrance. It's mature and it's sexy. This is like an everyday fragrance to me. I love this one when I'm shopping and out and about as well. Next on my list here, we have Kayali's newest fragrance which is let me get the name right here <laughs> vanilla royale sugared patchouli number 64 when i bought this i originally thought it was going to be almost like a more intense vanilla 28 fragrance from kayali which is one of my all-time favorites i don't really think it is a more intense version of vanilla 28 i think it really is its own fragrance um it's a lot more boozy I think it, it definitely has more oud to it. It just feels like a, a different scent profile and not a flanker of Vanilla 28, which is, I think is why they came out with it on its own. But just kind of a heads up because I assumed that it was gonna be more similar to Vanilla 28 when I picked this up. The top notes on this one are rum, vanilla orchid, and jasmine. Middle notes of vanilla, spicy notes, creme brulee, leather, tonka bean, and rose. And base notes of patchouli, brown sugar, oud, sugar, uh, amber, and musk. This is very reminiscent of a fragrance to me, and it's not Vanilla 28. I think it might actually be a little bit more similar to maybe Zerjoff's Bouquet Ideal uh, in the dry down. Okay, I had to go get my Bouquet Ideal to compare. They don't smell the same in the bottle at all. <laughs> so I don't know where I'm getting this comparison from, but if anyone knows what this is similar to, I can't put my nose on it. Similar to something in my collection. Maybe invite only? Maybe Kelly's invite only. I'll need to try that out. This to me is a spicy, boozy floral. It is not as vanillic as I had anticipated. Um, it's a lot more boozy and a lot more oody than I had thought it would be. Still a beautiful fragrance and it would be great when you're looking to command a room, especially at a holiday party. You get lots of rum off the top with a little bit of powder, you know, slightly indolic from the jasmine as well, or maybe that could be from the oud at the, at the base. So as this begins to dry down, I do get more of the vanilla and less of that floral note that I got in the beginning. I don't really get any creme brulee in this, maybe not for my nose or on my skin, but there is uh, a smoky, sweet quality there for sure. The mid to base for me is really where this fragrance shines. I think that you get less of the floral notes and more of that sweet vanilla. Um, I think that the mid to base is seductive and boozy. It is like a version of Vanilla 28, but it's more like her spicier sister, I would say. So this is fabulous for you know going out, date nights, holiday parties, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, just when you want to get noticed, this is the one. All right, and the final fragrance on my list today is Montel's Chocolate Greedy. This is just the perfect perfume if you are cozying up in the house, watching a Hallmark movie, having your cup of hot cocoa, maybe you're doing some holiday baking and you want to smell like a baked good yourself. This is all the way gourmand. The notes on this one are cacao, vanilla, tonka bean, coffee, dried fruits, and bitter orange. 
actually they have very similar notes to tobacco vanille with the cacao vanilla tonka bean and dried fruits i wonder if i mixed the two how it would smell so montel's chocolate greedy is very interesting because the chocolate note on this is not a ganache it's not a milk chocolate type of fragrance it is actually a chocolate powder fragrance so like a dehydrated chocolate it's that brownie batter mix or uh, chocolate cake mix or hot cocoa powder with those dehydrated marshmallows on top uh, that is truly what you're getting from this fragrance so what this reminds you of as it dries down is the the smell is like the taste of a vanilla charleston chew that's exactly what it is so it's that marshmallowy vanilla nougat i think it's a nougat enrobed in chocolate that is what the dry down of this smells like it is perfect all the way through all the way to the dry down i love it so much again perfect for cozy days inside or where just wherever you want to smell like a baked good this is it all right everyone that brings us to the end of today's video there are actually two fragrances i did not mention one is by rado's 11th hour uh, i think it's actually been discontinued i tried to buy it this year but they were totally sold out of it it's essentially like a boozy eggnog fragrance love it for the holiday season Kicking myself, I didn't buy it sooner, but if you have it in your collection, definitely break it out. And another one is Commodities Velvet. Uh, this reminds me of like a Turkish delight version of By the Fireplace. By the Fireplace on its own is an excellent holiday fragrance, with those toasted marshmallow notes and the fiery woodsy notes. But imagine Turkish delight on top of that. And I think of Turkish delight, I think of like narnia and that sort of thing so in, in my head it makes sense it's a holiday fragrance <laughs> anyway i would love to hear from you what are you wearing for the holidays do you have any of these in your collection any favorites that i need to know about please let me know in the comments down below thank you all so much for watching i hope that you all have a very happy holidays and happy new year and i will catch you in the next one thanks so much for watching and bye for now